key elements. You know, you can do a whole series on this. You can all do a 10-week series on what are the key elements. Qualities, characteristics. I like that. I was wondering if you'd lay this pipe over there. Thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. I hope people would borrow and never bring it back. He was really kind. He just pointed. <laughs> Corinthians passage that talks about you know what, what, who does God choose? He chooses what is that? What is basically in a nutshell? In a nutshell, what is that saying? We're all qualified. He chooses humble people who know that without Jesus they can't. Second guess ourselves. Doubt is going to shut down all sorts of things. You're able to take risks. You'll never get beyond yourself until you make a step beyond yourself. Isn't that right? Reminds me of the one fellow. Five qualities, they have a good eye and a glad heart. What I mean by a good eye, you're able to see where people really are. You're able to see where the encouragement really needs to happen. And you have a glad heart. We don't need workers in the field of God that look like they've been baptized in prune juice. Oh my goodness, they're just grumbly people. That's, that's not, no, you know, that's, you, how many like your boss to be grumbly? Oh my goodness. Humbly serves an obscurity. 
Obscurity means that people may never see you. I like his story, Successful Sports Teams. In his book about famous sports team captains, Sam Walker examines the hidden forces that create some of the world's greatest sports teams. And one of the most surprising findings was that one of the characteristics that makes for great captains is that they, they take care of tough, unglamorous tasks, and, and they are rarely the stars. They do the grunt work. Like in 62, when Brazil won its second consecutive World Cup, its team's unquestionable star was Pelé arguably the greatest soccer player of all time. The prevailing view is that Pelé's brilliance expressed by the 77 goals he scored was the team's driving force. But Pelé was never made the captain, nor did he lobby for the job. The team's primary leader was Hildorado Bellini, a tough and humble central defender who during a nine-year stint with Brazil never scored a goal. Bellini was a functional was functional, but not a star. While Pelé attended to the pressures of celebrity, Bellini took care of the daily, hourly grunt work of unifying the team. He cleaned up their mistakes with his fearless defense, often leaving the, the field bruised and bloodied, and, and he calmed and he urged his team forward when their confidence sagged. Interesting. It wouldn't be for him. How many know that if it wouldn't have been for Barnabas, we wouldn't have had a soul? Read it in the New Testament. It was Barnabas. And at first, the first missionary, when they, when they had their first missionary journey, it says in the scriptures, Barnabas and Saul. But after that, it was always Saul and Barnabas. He took a second. He took a second place. with the failures of others. You remember? There was John Mark. Mark. Paul wasn't excited about Mark. And he had some problems with Mark. But Barnabas came. No, he was for him. Paul kind of forgot where he came from. Great leaders are patient with the failures of others. with the failures of others. That has to be. Think how patient God has been with you. The last one that I'm going to put up here, doesn't love money, fame, or power. God said to Ezekiel, I look for someone to stand up for me against all this, to repair the defenses of the city and to take a stand for me and stand in the gap as a priest. To stand in the gap on my behalf. But I couldn't find anyone. Not mine, God said. How many want to be like Jesus? He's the one that stood in the gap. There are a lot of people that need someone to walk alongside them. Stand in the gap. I want you to pray about it. God is asking me to 
to say the powerful words. And we mean them from our heart. You took 12 disciples. to you, God, the Lord of the harvest, which you send forth laborers into this field right here. And would you put that on our hearts to pray? 